All right, I'm gonna show you something else that is heat related, having due to heat deficiencies. Now, can you see this gap? Right down here, I'm looking at, this is the radiator, that is the condenser right there. Let me see if I can zoom in better. Do you see that opening black space right there? You can see the front of the radiator. This is actually the condenser right here, and this is the radiator right here. But you have this big gap that when the fans pull that gap that goes all the way across, it's easier for air to be pulled through a large gap that has very little restriction than it is fine little fins in the front of a condenser back inside there. Same goes in the bottom. There's a large gap in the bottom. And next to the tank, um, upper, lower, they got that. Okay, so right there, you can see a piece of foam. So the technician either pulled it over or it was on there. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna to try to zoom in on it. Let's see if I can zoom in. Right, right there, that gray piece. Let's see. So there's the radiator. Then you see that gray with all the little silver and the sparkles? That's foam. Then that's resting up and sealing off the hot air that is built up under the engine compartment that's in excess of 200 degrees. That keeps all this air, because right here where my hand is, even though the fan is over here, over here on the side, I got nearly 200 degree air blowing over my fingers. And that 200 degree air wants to wrap around this water bottle right here, the coolant bottle. It wants to wrap around, come forward, and get sucked in front of the condenser because in front of the condenser is a low pressure zone, especially at idle. That's when you really need it. When you are at idle, you have no airflow pushing and flowing past the condenser. You're literally at a stop. So you end up with a negative pressure in front of the condenser and you roll around 200 degree air, comes around and wraps around and gets pulled in the side of the condenser, heating it up. But wait a minute, you have hot gas here. You wanna get rid of that hot gas by using fresh cooling air. But you're taking 200 degree plus air and rolling it around. Now let me show you on top of the original condenser what it looks like, what's missing. And you see that gap that's at the bottom of the top. So here's the original radiator. And you see this foam right here? This foam was missing off of the radiator. So, and this foam down here, you see how thick they, they have a big, and you can see where it's dark. This is where it was pressing up against and it was sealing airtight, not allowing, this is a, almost three quarters of an inch thick, 19 millimeters, 19 to 21 millimeters thick. And that foam was missing. So that means air doesn't wanna all come down through here. It wants to roll around on the other side, reducing the amount of airflow that comes through the condenser. All the air is supposed to pass through here. They have this thing, let me put it inside its little uh, one there. Then they have an opening right there. And I have it backwards. Let me turn it around. This other direction and upside down. And how screwed up can I be? But, Something like this. I'm trying to get this all show to. So you see this seal right here? It seals, so there's no air gap at all on this thing, and it seals down below. And then the other seal that is missing, let's see, right here, that seal right there, will seal what we were seeing when I was pointing down on the inside of the engine compartment over here where the um, uh, coolant bottle was right here and the stop, the hot air from rolling around, that was missing right there. So those are all things that will give you a hell of a hard time, especially in hot climates. For you guys who live in places like uh, the mid states and the southern states and uh, United States and the eastern when they're having hot swells and it's 100 plus degrees with high humidity. And for you guys who live in the Middle East, you know, Arabic countries over there, 
or Asian countries, when somebody does a repair on your car and they leave these out, and you have really poor cooling, especially at idle when you're in stop and grow traffic, that's when you want the most air to pass over your condenser, not around and behind your condenser. So these are a must item to be replaced. Otherwise, you go to a shop and the shop doesn't know. Very few people know those are missing, especially after the collision. Everything looks brand new and they have no idea that those items are missing. And you take it to a repair shop, say my air conditioning is not cooling correctly when I'm at idle. And they're looking at fans not working, maybe dirty, you know, plugged, you know, for your area where you get some sort of plant material. Yeah, it's cold. Um, and you have a cooling on it. I said, well, maybe the expansion valve is bad, Mr. Customer. Let me charge you $200, $300, $400 plus the recharge. I'll change your expansion valve. The shop changes your expansion valve because they're just guessing because they don't know these seals are messing. And customer goes off, it hits a couple hot days. He says, hey, when I'm in the stop and go traffic, I'm still having really poor cooling. My temperature goes way up because they're having 200 and plus degree air coming around and air not being pulled in through their condenser all the way. So, so they say, well, maybe, uh, maybe your condenser's plugged. Let me change your condenser. So they charge the customer a couple hundred more dollars and they change the condenser. Oh, maybe your compressor's weak. Let me change your compressor. And I see this stuff all the time, especially after a repair or you run over, you know, the bumps in the parking lot and you run them over. Well, you see the shield down here? This shield right here, what goes back several feet, stops. When you come at a stop, the hot air from the air conditioning, the radiator and your engine comes down here and it rolls around and it comes up in front of your condenser and radiator and it comes up inside here and it reheats your your condenser with 200 degree air and a lot of times that plastic shield will be left off and somebody says oh well i don't want to pay my deductible and maybe the insurance company says oh those plastic shields they don't do nothing they're not necessary so let's not put them on and when you have the plastic dams inside sometimes they get broken a little front end accident those cost extra money and they don't support nothing and the shop that's repairing your car will go, well, we're waiving his deductible. We'll try to save him some money. So we'll leave those little plastic shields or foam shields out if they were available aftermarket and didn't come with some assembly that was replaced. And then the customer is left with either one, poor air conditioning, two, spending a lot of unnecessary money because the technician doesn't know those are missing and he just has to start guessing and changing parts that never needed to be replaced when all it was was airflow. Airflow is king. Airflow, airflow, airflow can really mess you up in diagnosis. If you're just concentrating and you're having narrow sighted and you're thinking about hard parts, mechanical parts like compressors, expansion valves, fans, anything else, it could be just nothing but airflow messing up your diagnosis and causing the customer to have components replaced that are not needed to be replaced. All right, see ya. A little rant for today about something I see a lot.